Hello everyone and welcome back to another video in our testing with Spring Boot tutorial series. In this video we are going to be talking about how we can change the descriptions of errors when our test fails and also how we can handle exceptions in tests. So let's just uh, get straight into it. Uh, let's see how we can do some, um, yeah, how we can add some descriptions. Let me just uh, copy one of the tests like this one doesn't really matter and uh, let's uh, test uh, so test with description um, we are going to basically remove all of this and we are going to take the user service get all users and get one and so we are just taking any users doesn't really doesn't really matter here uh, we can just go to TO and make this final now um, let's do some basic check. Let's check the user's uh, age, for example. Again, we go assert uh, that and then DTO and uh, DTO get age. And uh, we would do something like is equal to whatever, 45. I'm not sure what the actual age is. So let's run test and see if it passes or fails. So uh, test failed and it says expected 45 but was 21. I mean, if you see this, it might be clear to you if you know the test, if you wrote it and something like that. But to somebody else, to some other developer in your team, this might be like, okay, I'm not sure really what's happening here and what exactly am I supposed to ex accept, expect? Is it 45? Is it 21? I, I don't know. But you can add some description for this. And then when the test uh, fails and somebody sees it in some, um, I don't know, whatever, like GitLab in one of the pipelines, you see something and you can see immediately what happened and why it happened. And then you can do here in your code, you can do something like this, as, and then it as you can provide a description, but you can also provide description with some arguments. And then you can do uh, something like, uh, And yeah, so you can add description, checking the age of user with name. And then this is uh, just a placeholder for this parameter. So this will be filled with the username failed. So if we run our test and then this description should be a bit more clear here, you can see checking the age of a user with name. Uh, okay, this is the username. So we can go get a um, name and then run it again. And basically you can see uh, the, the message. So the name here is filled with the name James Bond failed, expected to 45, what was 21. So now this might be a bit clearer um, when, yeah, when somebody is taking a look into that. Um, yeah, you can also override the default message. So if we, um, actually let's copy this and uh, let's make this always pass. So, um, and So here um, the test should pass always now because it's 21 and a test with and here we are going to override uh, the okay I don't know how to spell override we are going to um, uh, override the, that the message that we get back here so how to do that is we do the similar thing as we did before except now we do uh, with fail message and then um, with the fail message you can provide uh, again something like um, yeah we And you can do something like this, for example. I mean, it's quite stupid to pass in the argument like this if you already know it, but um, you can uh, maybe you have it in some some property in this test class and then you can put it here. So if you run this, um, we should see it a bit better. And it says should be 21. Doesn't really uh, says much, but you can change this. Uh, user age should be 21. Then when your test passes, you can see this fail message. So this is the error message that you get. Um, and uh, user sage should be 21. And here you can 
put this is equal to 21. So you can you could put this to, uh, for example, like this. Um, and then you could take this and this and this should do the verifications and then you again you see the error message here it's actually a quite neat trick uh which is yeah nice um yeah you could do the same for example with um, the i don't know the the user type for example you could also do the check of user should be admin or something and then you get okay yeah it wasn't admin it was moderator or whatever so basically you you get the point um this with fail message can override the, the exact the, the error message and now with the descriptions uh, we should be done and let's see how we can test exceptions so let's create a new test again we're probably going to just uh, create some exceptions here because our class is not really that easy to break because we don't have much code. <laughs> so uh, let's do some testing. So how do you check if the exception is uh, thrown? For example, without uh, assertions, without this uh, library that we're using, you would have to use a uh, try catch block and then in, in, in catch, uh, verify do some verifications that some exception was thrown which is I mean does work but not really practical so what we can do here is we can say assert that thrown by and then we provide in some supplier which we are going to put our code uh, is instance off and then you can even put the um, the class of the exception so let's um, what would be our uh, user service get all users and we have three users so let's go get user at 55 so index 55 which definitely doesn't exist and um, let's see what happens and uh, what we have now it will probably be the index out of bounds exception and we can make sure that this happens. So if our test passes, we know that this is happening and that this is true. Yeah, our test passes and we are expecting this error. But what happens if I go with one here? So we are expecting that this code throws an error, but it should not because we have that. And you can see that it didn't throw, raise uh, an error. This is quite useful um, when you are, I don't know, testing something and you want to make sure that your tests are um, yeah, are able to check exceptions that can happen in your methods. Like you know that something will break or should break a piece of code. And for example, if user enters a wrong input or whatever, uh, your code should raise an exception. Like, mm, I'm not sure. Let's say that you have users and your usernames are unique and somebody tries to create two users with the same username and on the second one, you should raise an exception. And this is how you can check that that ex exception is actually uh, uh, there that it uh, will happen so what else can we check we could check some um, messages here for example if I um, do something like has message and then you can um, containing and for example index 55 because I think this is contained here um yeah so this is contained i think it you can also do uh has message and if you just put it like this it will uh fail because yeah it should have the full message so this is the full message and we can copy it here so has message index 55 is out of bounds for length 3 uh, because the length 3 is the length of all our users so that's how many users we have um, we can also do uh, something like has message starting with um, this for example um, has message ending with um, then this maybe which is quite nice um, yeah I'm not sure what else uh, we can check 
Uh, there is also um, has stack trace. So you can check even there's something in the stack trace. I'm not sure what exactly happens here. So we can just run it again the same way as we did before. Uh, okay, um, let's do something like this. Um, yeah, so it has stack trace. This is this is our stack trace. So this is the stack trace of the exception. And basically, you can do yeah, something like this. And this will verify that this part is contained in the stack trace, which is quite nice. Yeah. And this is how you verify that the piece of code is drawing uh, some exception. But how do you do the opposite? How do you verify that it does not draw any exception? Because there are definitely cases where you would like to check that. For example, uh, just doing this should not draw any exceptions. And uh, how do you verify that? Again, you could uh, fail your test on, for example, with the track latch block, you go try, catch, final exception E. So um, on any exception that happens, you can say, um, hmm, just fail, yeah, fail, and this will fail your um, this will fail your test whenever an exception happens and you could then inside of that you could run something like this this will throw an exception and this will fail the test let's see if this happens yeah it does it says nope um, this is also a neat trick but yeah you don't want really want that so basically if um, this code is not drawing an exception like in this case it will not the test will pass uh, which is nice and then you can do some additional verifications here but I would not really do it like that the, the nice way I would do it is assert that code and then again you give in a supplier so something you want to execute does not throw any exception because this is a nice thing to do if you run this this should fail because again this draws an exception so we can see that expecting code not to rise a trouble but caught because yeah we got an exception but if we do this and then run our test again uh, we should see that it does not fail yeah perfect as you can see exception handling is quite easy um yeah i guess that would even be everything for this video uh, hopefully you liked it and if there are some questions do let me know and then i can try to go through them and maybe try to explain some things. Yeah, then I guess I will see you in the next one.